when I start working on a handle, I take it with me everywhere. And I'm always looking at it. And if I see a little spot, I keep a pencil in my pocket. And what I do is I mark different spots. I just continue to keep on looking at it and looking at it. And I look to see where I need to take a little bit of wood off. And I just put a little mark there. And when I have time, I work it off. Look at that poopy butt. Come on, stinky butt. What, are you hungry or something? I know he is. Poor boy. He's always so hungry. What are we going to do with him? Huh? Is he getting bigger? He's getting so big. He's going to eat all the food. What is he going to be? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> couple times Maybe three times a week for one meal, I'll add some salmon oil in for these guys. I don't do it every day. You gotta be careful. Start doing it every day and I, I'd probably have to supplement them with vitamin E as well. So, but you know, a few times a week, I think it really helps them out. Seven twenty in the morning. So yesterday, I got some old neighbors across the road. They're uh, elderly, and Cephas and Jan, and it's the second time it's happened. A huge ash tree fell on a camper they had in their backyard. They don't live in the camper, they have a trailer, but this time I really mashed it up. A couple of, there was a dead standing and uh, also an ash tree that probably had emerald beetles eating all through it. So I was over there most of the day trying to clean it up for them and I'm gonna continue to go over there and do it. But just so happened there was a piece uh, there was a section of the dead standing tree that just caught my eye and I'm I think I'm gonna be able to make some uh, Either axe handle or possibly even I might be able to try and make a flat bow out of half of it. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna billet that thing out this morning or at least start to It's already well seasoned might be just perfect too. We'll know once we get into it. But I'm taking these taking these ends to a couple axe handles that I had cut off and turning them into some splitting wedges. See if we just I 
You know, I could let Burgle and Bonzo figure out that food situation, but at some point it's going to turn into something really nasty. So I have to show both of them that I'm the one in charge, not them, and I control who eats what and when they eat. Because if not, Burgle would try and push Bonzo out of the way, and then when Bonzo gets hungry enough, you know what will happen. And I like to stay civil. I don't need my dogs getting in the fight. Get two males together, gets tricky. Get two females together, gets even trickier, in my opinion. But, if you're in control, everything's alright. Everything will be alright. Just gotta be in control. Already got a nice split down there, and I'm going to follow that natural split in the wood. Burgle still looking for scraps in Bondo's bowl. Play it safe. Like what goes around. There we You can bring it. Come on. He ain't gonna take it from me. He ain't big enough. Burgle! Knock it off. Let him be. Alright, come on. Let's move. <laughs> you gotta get your own, Burgle. You gotta learn to get your own, dude. One day, I don't know if you got it in you. Come on, Bunk. Come on. <laughs> 
Let's go. Virgil, quit spazzing out.
wasn't going to make a video of this handle. Been out here for about an hour working on this. But, for some reason, you know, I've just got a really good feeling about this handle. And I was going to make it straight, but you all see that? I think I'm going to make it a kind of a anorodak double bit handle. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Somebody restless? <laughs> what are you doing? You're crazy. You're crazy. You're fired up. One of these days I'm going to make myself a sawhorse. I think I'm going to have to look into that. As much of this stuff as I do would probably help big time. That's very rough, extremely roughed out, but it's starting to get somewhere. Now, <laughs> I think they're trying to tell me it's time to go in and go to bed. We'll continue this tomorrow. <laughs> it's the burgles. Hmm? Is he a smurgle burgle? Fired up? How my baby? Look at that pretty boy. Is he a good boy? Is Burgle a good boy? You look like you were playing in the snow. Weren't ya? Hmm? 
Right at the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, boys.
Well, I have to leave this handle slightly thicker than I'd normally like to do with a hickory just because it's ash. And ash is good and strong, but I feel like I just need to, it needs to be just a little bit thicker. Hickory's the best. I'm leaving a little bit of a natural curve in there. It's gonna kind of, as long as it stays on center, down at the palm swelling up at the head. If I get it a little bit snaky in the middle, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it actually looks cool. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. You know, follow the grain. That's actually how I started to, you know, get this handle shape. I could see it there in the wood as I was roughing this uh, handle out. Just follow the grain a little more and it turned into this. So far, so good. Let's see what happens. Been really bothering me. It's been hard. I've been trying to figure out what to do with this handle down at the palm swell. You know, I didn't give myself enough. Well, I barely did. Depends on what I want to do. But it would have been real nice if I'd left it bigger you know so what happens a lot of times i get carried away same thing with up here where the axe head's gonna go that's just barely under three inches it's like two and three quarter inches down here so i got a little bit carried away it kind of limits me on what size head i want to put on there well i could still put a three and a half pounder on here if i wanted but I'm bidding on a uh, handmade, Kelly Works handmade axe that's pretty busted on one end, huge chip out of it. And if they accept my offer on eBay, that's the head that's going to go on here. We'll see what happens. But for now, i got to try and figure out what to do down here. So I'm going to mess with this a little bit see where it leads just a little at a time
just even out what we have for now and then see what else I want to take off see like it's not even here and here I want to kind of make it more symmetrical and then I can see what I'm working with. Uh oh. Here's my pencil. Come on, bitch. You know, it would be easier if I had a vice out here, wouldn't it? But we don't have a vice. Nice seasoned, that perfectly seasoned ash, in my opinion.
This fat boy. Let me see if I can get this up behind him. It's too hard to keep it in focus. This fat boy is trying to make himself a web along the middle of the trail. Big boy. How many of y'all have already been on YouTube for two or three hours today? Be honest. How many of y'all have been staring at your phone for two or three hours? I, uh, you know, it's just not good for us. Maybe uh, turn that power button off and get out and take a walk outside. Look at how beautiful it is out here. Golden morning. Make sure you hit the pause button and watch the rest of this video when you get back inside. But seriously, hit that pause button and get out and take a walk or something. I'm sure you all been on here for too long already today. Unless it's early morning. That's an even better time to go take a walk. Go take a hike. If you got dogs, get your dog and I'm sure he or she'd love to get out early morning. But do it. Public service announcement. Now back to our regularly scheduled broadcasting. I was thinking about it on my way walking up here this morning. Um, I think I'm not going to put a double bit on here. I'm not going to turn this into an Anirondack. And partially a big reason for that is because I'm using ash wood. And this is my opinion, but... Ash is strong and great for handles, but if you overstrike, it takes, it like kind of busts it up a lot easier than it would a hickory handle. And so I don't want to be doing any splitting if I can help it, or very limited splitting with this, whatever axe head I put on this handle. I believe, I was thinking about it, I don't own any Connecticut pattern axe heads i think i'm on to uh look into getting the connie pattern axe true connie not one of those fake ones people say is a connie on the internet you know you gotta watch out on ebay you got people on there spouting stuff out that they have no idea what they're talking about i have some really cool heads coming on the way but I think, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see about putting a Connie on here. Connecticut pattern head. 
I think it'd look pretty neat. Get an old vintage one. That's what I'm thinking at the moment while I'm sanding. Who knows what will happen by the time this thing's done. I got some time to think about it. Always got time. On a project. I feel like I don't have any time. But I got plenty of time as well. I know that probably doesn't make sense. But when it comes to uh, working on different projects... Even though I'm limited in the time I can work on them, that time can be as long as I want it to be. So even if I only had five minutes a day to work on this, I could let it last indefinitely. Does that make sense? I could rush it and get it done in ten minutes. Or I could uh, just take my time with it and let it last an hour. And that's on a micro level. I'm just talking about on a smaller condensed level but what it really ultimately comes down to is you know I could take two hours to rough this thing out and throw a axe head on there and it'd be all rough and busted and you know it's nice to have a little bit of rustic look to it but you know I still like to keep it pretty nice you know it could be all crooked busted and you know hung halfway cocked sideways and all but and I could take, you know, two hours to throw a head on a handle. It looked like crap. Or, like, I've already probably been working on this sucker for a good 16 hours. Who knows? Maybe longer. Overall. And that's actually working on it, not just hanging out with it. When I start working on a handle, I take it with me everywhere. And I'm always looking at it. And if I see a little spot, I keep a pencil in my pocket. And what I do is I mark different spots. I just continue to keep on looking at it and looking at it. And I look to see where I need to take a little bit of wood off. And I just put a little mark there. And when I have time, I work it off. And I just continue to mess with it. Take it along the river, on hikes with my dogs. You know, it's a good problem solving stick too if somebody wants to mess around. So, it's good to carry it. <laughs> it's good to have it on me when I'm out in the woods. I want to thin this handle out too much more down here, but I want to give it just a little bit more of a swell. Got carpal tunnel real bad in my left. Sucks. Hand goes numb. I don't have any health insurance, so it is what it is. Is what it is, right? 
Could be worse. I gotta get back down the mountain. Let's see what we got. It's coming along. Got a ways to go. All right, gotta get on back, Jack. I've been uh, contemplating how I'm gonna finish out this palm swell on this new ax handle I'm carving out of some ash. And I think I finally figured it out. It's gonna be a new palm swell design. I'm going to call it the moose knuckle. And I'm going to carve it in the shape of a moose knuckle. And I just wanted to remind everybody, don't be paying attention to the moose knuckle when you should be paying attention to where you're swinging that axe or else you get yourself in trouble quick. <laughs>